So, did Nikon just make the perfect camera for casual shooters and creators? Well, almost. Let's check out the features and design of the Nikon Z30 to see how it competes with the other cameras out there and if it actually lives up to the hype. The Nikon Z30 is pretty much the Nikon Z50 with some pretty dramatic design changes. However, most of the good things from the Z50 stick around in the Z30. One of the most notable changes is that the Z30 does not have an optical viewfinder or flash, and that may or may not be an issue for some photographers. However, it does make the camera dramatically smaller, and I personally really like the compact size, and it still has a nice deep grip, and it feels really great in my hands. And that deep grip also houses a really robust battery. I took the Nikon Z30 for an entire week in New York City, and I shot with it on and off, and the battery did not die until the very last day. Plus, it does have a USB Type-C port for fast charging similar to your iPhone or Android. And despite being a small camera, it still has a mode dial and two command dials for shutter and aperture. It honestly feels like it has the same functionality that a DSLR or a proper mirrorless camera would. It does not feel like a compact camera in your hands. Another big benefit of removing the viewfinder is that you get a flat top to your camera, which makes it much easier to mount microphones and lav systems. Personally, I don't think vloggers and content creators really need a viewfinder, but I do think most of you guys will miss that flash, but you can always put an external flash unit if you really need it. But the most important thing that the Z30 gives you is a flip out screen to the side. So not only can you see yourself, but also get high angle and low angle shots. Plus the screen on the back also has touch functionality, which makes it really easy to fully operate your camera just using the touch screen. And that touch screen also has touch autofocus. So you can simply tap something and it will automatically track focus to that thing, even as you move around. I will go more in depth about the autofocus later in this video because there's a lot to say about it. However, what's on the inside is what really matters. So let's talk about the sensor, the video features, and frame rates of this camera and what it can actually shoot and do for you. Also, just a quick reminder, I'm gonna be leaving links to this camera and all the other camera gear that we talk about today in the description down below. So if you guys want the best possible deal on your camera gear for the best pricing and the most up-to-date pricing, make sure to check out the links in the description down below and let's get back into the video. All right, so according to Nikon, this has a 20.9 megapixel sensor. Let's make it easy for me and let's just say 20 megapixels. So the Nikon Z30 has a 20 megapixel APS-C size sensor. Now that might seem a bit low resolution to most of you because most cameras out nowadays have 24 or 32 megapixels. But here's the thing, you're only going to notice that 10% decrease in resolution when you're cropping into your photos in photo mode. When it comes to video, you will not see any practical difference. But you will get two major benefits from having a lower resolution sensor. Number one, better low light photos and videos. Because of that lower resolution sensor, you're going to get bigger megapixels, which allow you to catch more light and use this camera at a higher ISO. Basically, this camera is amazing in low light. While it's not as good as a Sony ZV-E10 or really any Sony camera, this is a pretty close second, especially for someone who's always on the go dealing with challenging lighting situations. This camera is going to be a huge benefit to you specifically in the low light department. And number two, you're going to get faster shooting rates in photo mode with a bigger buffer size. Basically put, you're gonna be able to shoot a lot more photos without the camera needing to take a break. So if you're shooting anything with a lot of movement, you're going to have an easier time shooting with this camera. It does shoot at 10 frames per second with continuous autofocus, which is pretty amazing. This is easily good enough to be a sports, wildlife, or lifestyle camera. So finally, let's talk about how the Nikon Z30 does for video, specifically for vlogs, YouTube, travel, and content creation. But believe it or not, it's also a great casual camera. Don't let any big fancy words scare you off. If you're just someone shooting for yourself to capture your special moments in your life, this is a great camera to pick up. As for the video specs, it does 4K and Full HD at 24 and 30 frames per second. It's going to give you crisp and clean video. But the other part of video is the audio, and the onboard audio is super solid. It's actually better than the Canon M50 and the Sony ZV-E10, which was shocking. It does have an input for external microphones, but it does not have an output for headphones, so you cannot monitor your audio except for the levels on the back of the camera, which may or may not be a deal breaker for some of you. But in terms of vlogging, YouTube content creation, and just overall video, this camera absolutely crushes it. But let's do a test so you can see how the audio and video is for yourself.
Roll the clip. All right, guys, this is an audio test. I'm in busy, busy Central Park. There's musicians on the side, there's people talking, but if the audio works here, then guess what? It will work anywhere else in the world. So you guys let me know what you think of the audio. I haven't listened to it yet, so hopefully it's not garbage. In my opinion, it looks pretty great. The Nikon Z30 is also a great slow motion camera. It does full HD at 60 frames per second for two times slow motion and full HD at 120 frames per second for five times slow motion. This camera is great for capturing those epic moments and slow motion is a really cool feature for creators to help create some epic moments in your video. However, if you're just a regular person casually shooting your own life, slow motion looks pretty dang cool. You should definitely try it out. Also, the Z30 can take your slow motion clip and slow it down for you in camera so you don't have to do extra editing. However, two things that I haven't seen any other reviews talk about with the Z30 are the colors and the kit lens. Personally, I've never been a huge fan of Nikon colors. However, when you compare the colors from the Nikon Z30 to a competing camera like the Sony ZV-E10, the colors in the Nikon are a lot better. When it comes to skin tone, Sony cameras tend to look a little dull or a little bit yellow. But with the Z30, I was really happy with the way it captured skin tones, and I really like the way it captured colors for landscapes and city shots. It does have a flat profile if you do want to create a more stylized look, but I should let you guys know this is only an 8-bit camera, which should be fine for most casual users and creators, but if you want to do something a little bit more professional, I would look at the 10-bit colors that are rolling out this year. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll actually give you recommendations for a couple of really good 10-bit cameras that might be a better fit for you than the Z30. One thing that really impressed me about the Z30 was the autofocus. And when it comes to a creator focus camera or a casual camera, you definitely need your autofocus to be on point. The Z30 does have face, eye, and object detection, which is pretty solid. It's not quite good as Canon and it's definitely nowhere near as good as Sony, but I'm willing to take the slower autofocus for everything that the Z30 offers. However, the autofocus does struggle just a little bit in low light conditions. Now, I'm not exactly sure why that is because this is not contrast detect autofocus, but it's something that you should know. And the kit lens with the Nikon Z30 is shockingly good. I'm honestly surprised by how good this lens is. It's a great vlogging and travel lens. It gives you both a super wide and a close up in one lens, but the thing that really surprises me is the fact that it's a really sharp lens. Most kit lenses just look meh, they're okay, they're not usually worth the money, but this kit lens is super good. Plus, it also has vibration reduction to help smooth out any movements and pans in your video. One thing to note, the Nikon Z30 only has digital stabilization, but that should be more than good enough for most creators and casual users. One feature that I know you guys are absolutely going to love about this camera is Nikon Snap Bridge. It allows you to wirelessly transfer photos and videos straight to your phone from the camera without having to plug anything in. You can use Bluetooth for smaller files like the photos, but you can also connect it using Wi-Fi for video and larger files. And since it has USB Type-C, you can also use this as a webcam. If you're someone that likes to stream or has a lot of Zoom meetings, honestly, I would not buy a webcam. Simply start using the Z30 if you're planning on buying one anyways. And one thing to note, Nikon does sell this camera with a Bluetooth remote and handle. The handle is really useful as a vlogging stick, but with the Bluetooth remote, you can also start and stop recording and also control your camera from far away. I personally did not end up buying it because I just didn't want to spend the extra money. But if that sounds like something you might want, I would definitely recommend checking it out. All right, so let's finally answer the million dollar question. Is the Z30 the perfect camera for casual shooters, vloggers, creators, and YouTubers? Like I said earlier, Almost. There's a few things about this camera that really irk me. For starters, it doesn't have a flash. Even though I don't care about the optical viewfinder, I really, really need a flash because as soon as I don't have a flash, now I can't take this camera to parties. Now I can't just get casual photos of my everyday life with it. And I think that's going to hamper a lot of casual users from using this camera. And number two, the Z30 only has a flat profile with no log profile or cinema profile, while the Sony ZV-E10, its main competitor, does have that capability, which is going to stop a lot of creators that are more focused towards the pro market and more into really creating stylized looks with their video from picking up this camera. Also, the Z30 does not have 10-bit color where Canon just released the Canon R10, which for an extra $250 gives you 4K at 60 frames per second plus 10-bit color. I think a lot of you guys that are serious creators or serious casual shooters are probably gonna wanna pick up the R10 instead of the Z30. The Z30 is for one really specific type of person. Someone that one doesn't need 10-bit color, doesn't need 4K slow motion, and is probably just shooting casual vlogs, 
casual lifestyle content or just shooting casually for yourself. The Z30 is a really good camera. It's pretty much what I wish the Canon M50 was, and what I wish the Canon M6 Mark II was. Overall, if you pick up the Z30, you should pick it up for one singular reason. The design and ergonomics. This camera is a dream to use. It's easier and more enjoyable to use than the ZV-E10, the M50, or the M6 Mark II. This is a camera you pick up for the design, not the specs. But chances are, if you're watching this video, you're either a YouTuber, content creator, or someone that just really loves photography and video. I call them casual shooters. But here's the thing, getting the right camera is only half the battle. The other half is learning how to use your camera gear to its full potential. Because here's the thing, you can get the nicest gear in the world, but it doesn't automatically give you nice photos and videos. You have to learn how to properly use your gear. So if that sounds like you, make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. It's a one week, super well-structured program that's going to show you all the technical things that you need to learn on how to properly use your camera, but also the things that you're spending hundreds of hours trying to learn on YouTube, like proper composition, storytelling, and good lighting. So if that sounds like you, make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. It's a program that I've spent over a year working on, and it's the program that I wish that I had when I first picked up a camera. And if you guys are thinking about picking up the Z30, make sure to use the links in the description down below for the best pricing and the most up-to-date pricing. And if you have any questions whatsoever about the Z30, hit me up in the comments down below. Now we'll either see you in the course or in the next video. Peace.